Hi, everyone. My name is Jerry Jewett Tennant, and welcome to today's conversation about academic detailing. I'll let Chris and Ashley introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Christine Fishman. I'm a pharmacist who works at the Metro Health System. It's nice to be here today. Hi, my name is Ashley Thomas. I am the program coordinator for the Metro Health System, um, and it's nice to be here as well. Okay, since this is lunch for probably many of you, we're going to get right into it and play a brief recorded video, and then we'll open it up for a virtual Q&A after the video. Welcome to our webinar about academic detailing. We're so happy you decided to join us today. We have four basic goals. To tell you about why academic detailing is here in Cuyahoga County, to explain what academic detailing is and why it's useful, to show you how to implement a program and to tell you about Metro Health's new academic detailing program that they've implemented. We're your guides on this academic detailing learning journey today. I am Jerry Jewett Tennant, Overdose Data to Action Program Manager at the Center for Health Affairs, and my co-presenter is Christine Fishman, the Academic Detailing Lead at the Metro Health Office of Opioid Safety. We are true believers in the value of academic detailing. You can think of us as academic detailing evangelists. Just very quickly, we need to acknowledge that neither of us have any conflict, conflicts of interest to disclose. Metro Health has developed an opioid stewardship academic detailing program, which is one of many programs they've developed as part of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Overdose Data to Action Grant. One of the main objectives of this grant is to expand academic detailing, or AD, to other systems. Our job today is to teach you all about academic detailing and how it can be used to help improve patient outcomes related to opioids. This presentation will also guide you through how to detail. And if AD is something you're interested in trying in your facility, especially in Cuyahoga County, we are here to help. As part of what we do for the grant, Metro Health and the Center for Health Affairs are able to help you with technical assistance in beginning a program in your system. Our contact information will be listed at the end of the presentation if this is something you'd like to learn more about. Overdose deaths are at record levels. More than 100,000 people died from an overdose during the 12-month period ending in April 2021. That's an increase of more than 28% during the same period in 2020. New research suggests pandemic effects may lead to 75,000 of what are called deaths of despair from drug overdose, alcohol abuse, and suicide. Reports of opioid fatal and non-fatal overdoses have spiked in some areas across the country since the coronavirus pandemic began. The reasons for this are multifaceted and may be in part due to reduced access to healthcare and recovery support services. If you are involved in opioid use disorder or substance use disorder in our county, you know this is a worsening problem for us as well. COVID has, of course, made most bad situations worse, and OUD is no exception. In Cuyahoga County, we had 719 overdose deaths in 2021, and some of those overdoses were happening at an alarming rate. In November, there were 12 suspected overdoses in two days, and in December, there were eight suspected overdoses in a 24-hour period. You might be wondering at this point where academic detailing fits into all of this. Well, Academic detailing is, at its heart, a 15 to 20 minute education session. In other words, it's direct outreach to clinicians by a designated detailer who has all the latest clinical information, resources, and health system policies about a clinical topic. It can be any topic the health system or department feels their clinicians need to know about in a very targeted way. Things like diabetes or heart disease, prevention and treatment topics, opioid use disorder, or simply new policies that aren't making it into practice for whatever reason. So why this type of education? Well, there's an overwhelming amount of research and data produced worldwide every day that contributes to evidence-based medical practice. And the bottom line is it's just impossible for clinicians to keep up with the pace of advancement in medical knowledge and then use it in their practice. It's also true that health systems develop new and changing policies regarding treatment and care all the time. And that sometimes takes a while to filter down to practice, especially when using traditional communication methods. But of course, those aren't the only reasons why. AD is a proven strategy that combines the best evidence and behavior change recommendation, while at the same time addressing the provider's needs. 
The whole goal is to develop an interactive, continuing relationship between detailer and clinician to learn what the clinician is facing. What are the barriers to better treatment? How and what is this provider doing with this clinical topic? Are there things they'd like to talk about? What specifically could help them? All of this is to improve the clinician's self-efficacy around a given topic, for the detailer to become a resource, and finally, to improve patient outcomes. There is no judgment and no targeting of individual physicians, only help. The Veterans Administration has been implementing academic detailing in their clinical practice for several years. Their data suggests AD does in fact improve patient outcomes and clinical behavior. In fact, there is a lot of AD success to be found in the literature. One of the most recent research articles from 2021 showed AD was implemented as a part of a quality improvement project and significantly improved colorectal screening rates in primary care. For our purposes as part of the Overdose Data to Action Grant, the Academic Detailing Initiative at Metro necessarily focuses on opioid safety. As we mentioned earlier, overuse of opioids is still a problem. Many clinicians who work in primary care often are not aware of opioid stewardship or the resources available to them and their patients. This is especially true if they have inherited patients on opioids from other physicians. Key messages about opioids can be delivered via academic detailing with the support of educational materials and tools that can help with new safety practices. Another deliverable of our overdose data grant was the development of an opioid management toolkit. This toolkit has a specific academic detailing section and a program implementation guide available for downloading. Links to this resource will be available at the end of our talk. Now we'll move on to the next part of our presentation. How exactly does academic detailing work? There are really four main steps to starting AD in any health system. Introducing the concept, planning the program, implementing the program, and evaluation. We'll go through the details of each step in the next slides. Hopefully by now we've convinced you that AD is great. Now what? Well, if you wanna start a program like this, you've got to get Brian on a broad scale. A physician champion is essential. This person will serve as a leader by lending credibility and advocacy. A pharmacy leader or a high-level pharmacy executive in your system can also act in this champion role. Any program also needs C-level support. Getting this kind of support would most likely fall to the physician or pharmacy champion. They would approach people like the chief executive officer or the chief medical officer to ask permission and support to begin an AD program. Of course, there should be a program manager to organize the AD effort and possibly be the detailer. If the program manager is also the detailer, this person ideally should have some clinical background. Many organizations use clinicians already on staff, like a pharmacist, a nurse, or a physician assistant. Detailing does not have to be this person's full-time job. Some organizations use only part of a pharmacist's FTE for detailing. This last bullet point on the slide should probably be first because it's very important. An administrative assistant, a scheduler, or someone who has scheduling access is critical to this process. They can arrange provider appointments for the detailer with minimal effort. Some AD programs are able to use an appointment request system like Appointlet alone, but larger systems benefit greatly from a scheduler. Again, this person does not have to be fully dedicated to the academic detailing program. Okay, so once you have the buy-in and the go-ahead for academic detailing, the next step is planning. You should start by designing the goals for your program to identify the purpose of the AD program in your institution. You can determine program goals by learning about the challenges clinicians faced and gaps in care. The key messages you deliver in your detailing sessions will be derived from those program goals. The next step is to develop educational materials. The, these will reinforce the key messages you will be presenting and can be customized to meet your clinician's needs and they can be used to reflect your institution's policies. Here are some examples of educational resources that I developed. This fact sheet and chart reflect the priorities of the Office of Opioid Safety and our programming goals. The fact sheet on the left includes law pertaining to opioid prescribing, incorporating our control substance policy. The chart on the right shows the various urine toxicology screens we offer and what they test along with some useful tips for our clinicians. These are items I discuss, 
then sent to clinicians after our AD session with their follow-up email. So even though we began by sending emails to our department heads describing academic detailing and we introduced ourselves to individual clinicians, we really were not able to schedule appointment, appointments consistently at first because few in our system had heard of academic detailing. While we received some help from some very kind administrative assistance in the adult medicine service line, this was just not sustainable. We discovered very quickly that we needed a dedicated person for the scheduling process. A person who understood our hospital's systems, arrangement of clinicians, their locations, and the ability to see their schedules. We also use a pointlet for scheduling. As you know, evaluation of a program is very important because it allows you to demonstrate its effectiveness and identify areas of improvement in your process and your outcomes. We did things a little bit differently here at Metro Health because AD is so new, it's, a, it's just a new concept. Honestly, I hit the ground running and began by detailing first. Meeting with clinicians allowed me to identify gaps that helped build our surveys. We made a pre-survey, a meeting feedback survey, and a post-survey to be administered four to six months after our meeting. A year into our program, we now only use the pre-survey and the post-survey. We discovered that three surveys were just too much for our clinicians and their willingness to, response, well, to respond was not there. So now you've prepared yourself to begin academic detailing. How do you do it? What do you do in that 15 to 20 minute meeting with your clinician? There are five distinct parts to every detailing session. These include an introduction, a needs assessment, delivering your key messages, handling objections, and summarizing and closing the meeting. Let's go through each part. Let's start with the introduction. As I'm talking to the clinician, I make sure that I communicate the reason for our meeting is a CDC grant. This is to create credibility. I point out that the meeting was scheduled to emphasize its importance so the clinician doesn't see it as just an interruption. I also mention we're talking with all clinicians to let them know they haven't been singled out and it's not punitive. Finally, I confirm, is this still a good time to show respect for their time? All of this helps to set the tone for a productive meeting. Next, we move on to the needs assessment. This is done on the spot as I begin the session and requires that I listen. I ask open-ended questions to get clinicians engaged. For example, I say, can you please tell me about your practice? I pay attention to their body language, even during virtual meetings. I also paraphrase back to the clinician what they say to be sure I have correctly understood their concerns. I'm also very direct and very honest in my reply to their concerns. The next step in the session is delivering the key messages. Key messages are the reason you have these visits because they drive behavior change. I use specific action-oriented language related to clinical care when delivering them. To make good key messages, it's important to consider two elements, the features, which is how you present the facts, and the benefits. This is how the message helps the clinician and then the patient. An example key message is to check the prescription drug monitoring program. The benefit is that it can reduce the occurrence of doctor shopping. I wanna point out that often in my AD sessions, I face some objections from clinicians. I'm aware these come from biases and preconceptions. In your detailing journey, you need to anticipate them and be prepared to handle them. You can think of objections as opportunities to learn where they're coming from and how you can meet their needs. Listen and try to understand their point of view before making suggestions. Use empathetic phrases like, a few of our clinicians have felt the same way. Try to reframe their objection in a positive way. Always remember, if you're unable to provide an answer, it's okay to follow up with a solution later. This can also be a great opportunity to strengthen your connection with the clinician by extending your communication with them beyond the initial meeting. I'm going to provide an example of this on the next slide. 
Here's an example of how to turn an objection into something positive. Going back to our prescription drug monitoring program example, when the clinician says, I don't have the time to check ORS, we can empathize and state that in fact, many clinicians feel the same and are not aware that it's become much easier to do this process. One click of a button provides you with the data needed to make an informed decision about prescribing. We can show our clinician where to document an impression using a specific dot phrase that meets the requirements of the institution and the law. Finally, the last step is summing it all up and closing out the session. One key point to remember is that it's important to stay within the allotted time. Often when I'm near my time limit and still have topics to cover, I ask the clinicians if they need to stop or if we can continue. At the end of our meeting, I thank the clinicians for the time they spent with me and ensure they have no more questions and concerns that need to be addressed. Usually it's important to make future appointments with my clinicians, but being the only detailer in our system does not allow me to do this. However, I do ask if I could meet them in the future. In most cases, within 24 hours, I follow up with a thank you email and the educational materials to reinforce our discussion. I also give the clinician my contact information. Okay, that finishes up our step-by-step -step walkthrough of academic detailing. Now we have some time to talk about what really goes on in the AD program at Metro Health. Hi, so hopefully everyone's back with us. Uh, this is our live portion of the presentation and we are here with um, Christine and Ashley again and I have a couple questions for them about what's been happening at Metro Health and how they implemented this program. So Chris, I'll start with you. How long have you been detailing at Metro and how were you trained to do this? So I started the detailing program at Metro Health in January of 2021. Um, I kind of started without training because uh, training was not going to be available with NARCAD um, until March of 2021. Um, so let me start by saying NARCAD is the National Resource Center for Academic Detailing. And so I reached out to them and said, help, I'm supposed to start this program at my, you know, hospital system. I don't know where to go. Can you please link me with uh, a mentor? And so, hold on one second. Oh. Um, so they linked me with uh, somebody who had started a program at One Tennessee. Her name is Lisa Jenkins. And um, so she helped me tremendously by walking me through the process of getting started, um, what to do. She gave me some ideas on creating educational materials, on all kinds of stuff. And then in March, I did go to NARCAD. Well, it was virtual, but, you know, I, uh, I attended a session of training and um, was able to do that. So I'm thinking about if somebody isn't going to be trained at NARCAD or doesn't have a mentor to kind of help them through this, how would they go about finding someone who can help them um, get started with AD? So um, we have, you and I, our you know, organizations, the Metro Health System and the Center for Health Affairs, we have formed a collaboration and um, actually we can help everybody get started. But I think you should talk more about that because that's you know, your specialty. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, so as part of our grant and some of our deliverables, we want to expand AD and we want to help people learn about it and um, provide technical assistance and maybe some training and help you with some of the basic steps that you saw in the video. Um, another, I think another um, good resource for people would be to um, check out our opioid management toolkit that we was another one of our grant deliverables. And that is going to be in the attachment section, which is the little um, paper clip on the side of your screen. So you can check that out. And there's a lot about academic detailing there. It's a pretty inclusive um, active academic detailing section. And so you're saying there's going to be a link in the material that's... There is. Yeah. So the little um, paper clip has the attachments for this, uh, this webinar. And you can... There's... I think two, two or three resources in there. Okay. So um, my question when we first started this was, um, 
Chris, I know Metro wanted to do, to start academic detailing with primary care docs. And I'm wondering why you all chose that group in particular. Well, um, we identify, we, in, in talking to them and, you know, learning about Metro Health, um, we identified certain gaps in knowledge within our primary care providers. We also, um, this to me is a public health initiative. I'm a huge public health advocate and um, it just, it was a public health initiative and we felt we could have the biggest impact on the most number of people because primary care um, at Metro Health serves the most number of patients. So we wanted to try to reach as many, help as many providers improve outcomes for their patients as quickly as possible. So the goal was to meet with all of our primary care providers with the first year in order to help address their knowledge gaps and then to reach as many people as possible. Okay. So of course, any, any new project has some challenges. Um, what, what have you found to be the greatest challenge in standing this up at Metro and what was the solution you all came up with? The truth is the biggest challenge um, I had starting a program especially since I was by myself and I didn't really understand how the Metro Health system worked, was being able to schedule providers. I used to worry about it all the time. And the solution came when Ashley joined us and official capacity about, you know, a couple of months ago, um, actually probably within the last, I don't know, few months. And she's been, she's made a huge, tremendous difference. And I want to let her talk about what she does and how she does it. Um, yes. So I think as far as scheduling for AD, um, it made it a little easier for me as I've worked for the Metro Health System for over five years now. So in the positions prior to um, being a program coordinator with um, the Office of Opioid Safety, um, I kind of got the trust, I gained the trust and credibility from the providers because I spoke to them even in my other positions. And I think that's one of the major um, things that you would need for a scheduler and a successful academic detail. Else that's really important is understanding your system. Um, I learned how my system works, what things is needed to um, progress in scheduling. And you have to find that out for your system and know um, the ins and outs of it. And then lastly, the major thing as well is having access to your provider schedules and calendars. Um, the last thing you wanna do is put an appointment on there and then they have, they're in clinic or they have a meeting. So having access to the provider's calendars and the schedules, it's also really, really important. So Ashley, I'm curious about that. Um, so how, how exactly do you, um, figure out that with having direct access to their schedules, how do you explain to them what's going to be showing up on their calendar? Um, so initially, before we even schedule the academic detailing appointments, um, we email each provider. Um, so I email them and just let them know that the email is um, coming out for AD and it's informing them of the CDC incentive that we have. And I introduce Chris and who she is and um, a couple of topics that she'll discuss. So that way they're not blindsided by um, the meeting on their calendar. Also with me sending that out initially, it gives them a chance to let me know what their availability is and to be able to block their schedule so that no patients are affected. Um, a lot of providers have schedules booked so to be able to go in, see it, and be able to block it um, is another awesome thing. Um, also, so far um, in the Metro Health Program, we have had 100% success rate um, with this process that we're using. Even though we may have some people reschedule, just, you know, some doctors, just because of things out of our control, our success rate is pretty good here um, in our process and the way we're doing things currently. Okay. Sounds good. So this is my last question. Um, what do you think has been the most surprising part of this program at Metro that you've discovered? There's been some actual, a couple of great surprises. Um, it's been, this experience has, has uh, provided a positive response from most, from all the clinicians, really. They've all been very receptive. They've all been attentive. They listen. They really I, I've learned that all of them, all they think about is how to best take care of their patients. I mean, I have not 
have encountered anybody who's been resistant to these meetings. Um, and also they reach out with questions. So even though I may not schedule further appointments with them because there's only one of me here, they do reach out when they have questions or concerns. They know we're there to support them. They know we're not there to judge them and make them feel bad. The last thing I wanna add that was really surprising and in a wonderful way was the fact that, you know, I when I, we started the program at Metro Health, it was 100% virtual because of COVID. And at first I thought, oh my gosh, how am I gonna develop a relationship with these people? But I'm learning that virtually meeting with these providers has been enlightening and great. I can still form relationships with them. I can still answer their questions. Um, I have just started now getting into face-to-face -face meetings, but I have to tell you, virtual meetings are awesome because I have the clinician's undivided attention. There's nothing else going on. They have to focus on me on the screen. And it's just, it's short, sweet, to the point. Hi, we start, bye, we go, and it's over. So those have been some great surprises with academic detailing here at Metro Health. That's great. Um, so if anybody has any questions, you can put them in the in the question box. That's where the question mark is on the on your nav bar on the side. Um, and we also wanted to remind you that uh, if you look at the little paper clip, there's going to be an attached. There's going to be some documents there. One is the link to the opioid management toolkit. The other one is um, a link to um, an evaluation. So part of what we do because it's for the CDC grant, we evaluate everything we do that that. Uh, pertains to academic detailing. So this webinar is one of those things. So we're asking if you could fill out that evaluation, that would really help us out. Um, and if you want any further information, uh, I believe all of our contact information is in the little box with the exclamation point on it on the side. Um, and I think, uh, I'm not really, I don't, I'm not seeing a huge amount of questions. Um, so Chris and Ashley, we have about three minutes left. Is there anything else you would tell somebody who might want to get started around here? I would say hit the ground running. Figure out what's going on in your institution. Reach out to NARCAD because they are extremely helpful and um, they they really try to help as much as possible. Um, and then make sure you have somebody like Ashley. She's amazing. She saved my life. <laughs> so Ashley, had you ever heard of academic detailing before you started working with Chris? I had not. <laughs> Chris definitely introduced me to acad academic detailing um, kind of when I first started the position. And then after that, we've just been rolling since then. <laughs> <laughs> it's been kind of fun, right? She keeps me on my toes. <laughs> right. and, and she keeps me straight. Like she's like... <laughs> You cannot schedule this on this day because this is going on, or you know, this physician is doing that, or this provider is doing this, and she she sets me straight. I mean, whatever Ashley says, I pretty much do. <laughs> and so, you guys, I mean, it's just the two of you, right? Correct. So you can, and Ashley, this isn't your full time. You know, you both do other things as well. Yes. And what's Chris? Do you do? You work on the education team there. And Ashley, what's your other position? So I work for the MEC clinic as well, which is our motivation and engagement clinic as the coordinator. Okay. So it's possible to have, you know, a little bit of your time for academic detailing and a little bit of time for another job. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. She stuck with me for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I think great teamwork is, makes a successful um, academic detailing program. So... Yeah, I think that was probably one thing we didn't really realize, Chris, when we were both trained, that um, you, that scheduling is such a, you know, if you don't have access to that, it's almost impossible. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because at one point before um, I asked Ashley to help me, I was panicking, thinking to myself, uh, I don't know how I'm going to ever talk to these people or find who these providers are. I mean, we have 21 sites. That means 21 different locations where we have providers. And for somebody like me, I would that's overwhelming, especially with the number of providers that we have. And then Ashley comes along. She's like, yeah, I know them all. I know how to find them. I know how to reach them. I'm like, oh, can you please help me? And she's like, yes, I'll help you, Chris. So that was wonderful. 
Okay, so um, we have used up our 30 minutes. Uh, if, again, if anybody wants to contact us, our information is in the announcement box and we'd be happy to help. And I'll say goodbye now and let you guys do the same. Bye everybody, thank you for joining. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining. Thanks again.